Diving into Washington Commanders' second pick of the 2022 NFL Draft, Alabama defensive tackle Fedarian Mathis is under the microscope. Draft grades are coming in, as are undrafted free agents, with rookie minicamp happening in just a couple of days. We talk about it all right now on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome in, Commanders fans, to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, free and available on all platforms. And we thank you for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. I'm David Harrison covering the Commanders for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation and my co-host Chris Russell, the Rooster, one half of the Russell and Metahurst show on the Team 980. Find Chris and Pete there Monday through Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern or anytime along with this show on the Odyssey app. When we're not there or here, we're on Twitter at dharrison82, at russellmania621, and at LO Commanders. We thank you again for making us your first listener view every single day. Today, we're going in depth on second round draft pick, 15th overall pick of the second round, Alabama defensive tackle Fedarian Mathis. Yes, Fedarian Mathis out of Alabama. Um So, David, this was about as unpopular of a pick, it seemed, with the fans on Twitter in real time as I remember in a while. Now, maybe I'm forgetting one, um, but, man, were they upset, especially, especially with N'Kobe Dean on the board still needing an inside linebacker. And, oh, by the way, this pick coming at 47, and N'Kobe Dean didn't go until 83 with the Philadelphia Eagles. And with having Jaqu- uh, Jaquan Brisket, uh, Brisker, I should say, uh, on, I'm thinking about Brisket, um, on the board, and he went, a, what, a pick later to the Chicago Bears in the second round. So fans met this pick with as much detest as I remember for any recent pick. So I ask you, was this a need pick in your ming- opinion, a value pick, a reach, or a potential disaster, which is what I think most fans pretty much graded it as. Yeah, I mean, people not happy with this pick. I'm not going to say it's a potential disaster because that's not it's not giving credit to Fedarian Mathis, and I think it's important in this aspect to keep the, the evaluation, the analysis, and even the criticism to the team, not to the player. So Fedarian Mathis, the player, very, very talented guy, very big guy, very strong guy, a, a block eater, a space eater, on the defensive line is going to have an impact whenever he's on the field. I, I can pretty much promise you that. So Fedarian Mathis, love the prospect, love the player in a vacuum. That being said, for the Washington Commanders, doesn't really feel like a need. Now, I almost kind of wonder, Chris, uh, if the Fedarian Mathis pick is actually a makeup for round one, and if the Washington Commanders weren't trading back in round one, hoping to still be able to get Georgia defensive lineman Jordan Davis, who kind of fits a little bit of the Fedarian Mathis role, in which case – you see Washington come back and maybe target wide receiver here, and we'll kind of get into the what we would have done necessarily uh, type of thing in, 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 in the future here on this show. But even at 16, even if you, you trade back from 11, you know, Jordan Davis goes 13th overall. So at 16, your big guy, your big defensive lineman is gone. I still don't see it, and we really didn't talk about a big interior defensive lineman being a need in this in this year's draft class for this team when we talked about defensive linemen we're looking for what more pass penetration more pass rush ability that's Devontae Wyatt if you're looking at the Georgia defensive lineman that's Devontae Wyatt not Jordan Davis Devontae Wyatt was there at 16 so for me I think you know and I don't want to get too far ahead of our script here but if it's me I'm going Devontae Wyatt at 16 and I think Devontae Wyatt at 16 is much more palatable to to fans and even media members than maybe a Jahan Dotson. And again, it's nothing against Jahan. I love what Jahan Dotson brings to the field and his talent, ability, the hands, all that stuff. I think he's a great kid. So from what we know, but I think when you look at the team, and again, Martin Mayhew spent a lot of time this weekend talking about eye of the beholder and all that, that makes to me, it fits more needs when you go Devontae Wyden around one, you, you add a pass rusher to your interior defensive line. Maybe you add him with Jonathan Allen. Now you have a little bit more oomph on passing downs. Then you come back in round two at the 47th overall pick and you go wide receiver with the the handful of talented guys that were still available. 
So you would have flipped the script. Um, I have no problem with them going the way they ultimately went. And yeah, maybe if Jordan Davis was there at 16, they certainly would have done that. Uh, He wasn't. Uh, I got to be honest, though. I I don't think if they took Devontae Wyatt at number 16 overall instead of a receiver, even though there wasn't a lot of clamoring from the fan base about Jahan Dotson per se, because a lot of people thought he was going to go later. Mm-hmm. I think they would have had a problem. I, I don't think they yeah. would have loved Devonte Wyatt uh, at all. So Fedarian Mathis then Maybe. becomes the guy that they ultimately go to. Right. Yeah. And here's my thing. Uh, again, I, I, I asked this loaded question, you know, was it a pick? a need pick, a value pick, a reach, Mm -hmm. or a potential disaster. I I agree with you. I I think it would be really, really, really wrong of us and immature. Nah, immature is wrong. I I think it would be, um, I think it would be silly of us to say potential disaster, right? Uh, That's not fair to the player. And that's also not fair to the organization. But I do feel like we could call it a reach, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I do feel like that is fair to say it's a reach. Now, When I say a reach, that's based on projections and rankings. That's not based necessarily, David, on how he fits into the scheme and what the potential need is now and next year. And what we mean by that, and this is what we're kind of circling back to, is we don't know about Deron Payne's future. Right now, here's what we know. Deron Payne going into the final year of his deal. Number one. Number two, they lost Tim Settle and they lost Matt Ioannidis. That's two big losses, two huge veteran losses at that interior defensive tackle position opposite of Jonathan Allen. They absolutely needed a player in this role. I think we all expected it. So to me, even though it's a little bit of a reach in terms of rankings and projections, I do think it's a need. So I think... You combine that and get value out of that. And I don't know if I'm saying that the wrong way, but that's kind of the way I look at it. Because, again, you're you're taking a guy in the second round that may have gone a little bit later according to other rankings and other teams. That's fine. But you know what? You have to look at scheme and you have to look at need within the team. And I don't understand, quite honestly, how people are walking around going, you know, and I heard from a million fans over the week, oh, this is not a need. What are we doing here? This is crazy. The defensive line is the best part. No, it's not. No, it's not. Chase Young's coming off of a torn ACL and wasn't very good last year. Montez, mm-hmm. Sweat, mi- Montez Sweat missed half the year, and they lost Settle and Ioannidis. What are, we, what are we looking at here, people? What are we looking at? This is need. This is value. This is now. This is rotational now. He's not going to start now because they didn't trade Duran Duran Payne, or at least they haven't right now. No. But he's going to be in the rotation. He's going to play 20, 25 snaps a game, David. Uh, he absolutely is in year one, and he'll probably be your starter in year two. Yeah, he's going to be a key contributor, right? And that's what Ron Rivera said at the end of this whole thing. They wanted to come in, and they wanted their first four picks to be guys that they could expect to be key contributors on the 2022 roster, and he feels like they did that. And when you look at the defense line, you you just said it. You lost Settle, you lost Ioannidis. Granted, yeah, you let Ioannidis go. I got it. You created the hole that you're now patching, but there's still a hole there uh, that needed to be patched. And, and, you know, there's a lot of of draft pick, uh, you know, invested in the front four, in the front seven, even if you go back to, you know, Jamin Davis, first-round pick, uh, linebacker. Now you have even more. But to say it's not a need definitely doesn't, doesn't, you know, that's that's not accurate. Say it's not a need isn't inaccurate. Now, is it a reach in a vacuum? I would say, yeah, it is a reach. I think Federian Mathis had a late day, you know, or late round two, early round three type of grade on him. But if you look at the way the rest of the draft board goes, Federian Mathis, the only or the last interior defensive lineman selected in the second round. So if you're Martin Mayhew and you trade back from the 15th pick in that round and say you go back to 20, 21, 22 in the second round, somebody else may take this guy. He's the next interior D lineman basically off the board. And you don't know if somebody else is, is going to now take him because you went ahead and fell backwards. So you take the guy that you want and who's the next interior defensive lineman off the board outside of Federer Matha. I don't know. Cause he's a third round guy and I'm not even looking at the third round right now. Cause we're talking about the second round, but the bottom line right. is the rest of the NFL basically tells you there was not another interior defensive lineman worth a second round pick outside of maybe Federer Mathis. Are you that confident that that, that Mathis is going to drop from the forties into the sixties or seventies where you can then come back and get him in the third round, because I'm probably not. And even as he's going to last five or 10 more picks, 
because I'm not. And again, uh, yeah, back to the whole circling back to the main point of this whole thing. Definitely a need because Deron Payne goes out. I mean, do you want David Botter, or Daniel Weiser, or Tyler Clark starting for the rest of the season on your interior defensive line? I don't, but I'm much more care or more much more comfortable with Fedarian Mathis. Absolutely. All right, coming up, I wanted to get into some of the things that we've seen on the cutups and the clips on Fedarian Mathis as we dig a little bit deeper on the Washington Commanders' second round pick. We will do that. Plus, we'll get into Mel Kuyper's report card grade for the Washington Commanders 2022 NFL Draft. That's next right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. David? Yeah, we're going to do that. Thanks to our friends over at BetOnline.net, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Baseball season's started, I think we can all say. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, thanks for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and your first watch if you're watching on YouTube of the day. We appreciate you along with David Harrison. I'm Chris Russell. You can follow David, as you can see, uh, for those of you watching again on YouTube at David uh, at D Harrison 82. David Harrison is his name uh, at D Harrison 82. You can follow me on Twitter at WrestleMania 621. You can read David SI.com's fan nation covering the Washington commanders. All right, David. So let's get to this part of it. Um, when I went and I watched a bunch of cutups, and again, this is not every snap, every down, every play, all that. To me, Fedarian Mathis stood out when you talk about, like he didn't have just explosive speed or athleticism or what 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 people would maybe define as that quick twitch burst. But what one thing that immediately came to light right away for me, and I'm wondering if it did for you, he didn't seem to give up on plays. He's relentless. He yeah. gets after it. He chases laterally. And he has a closing ability. I saw on one little pitch toss to the left where he just rocketed out of his stance, David, and he closed probably about a gap of mm, maybe eight to ten yards on James Cook, Dalvin's brother, who, mm -hmm. you know, of course went in the, what's, uh, third round, I think, to Buffalo uh, out of Georgia. He closed on him and engulfed him so quickly. To me, I'd almost rather have a player that never gives up, that 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 is relentless, that chases things down from behind, that can close the back door, if you will, than have somebody that's always just quickie twitch fast and bursts and gets out of position and maybe doesn't play within the scheme. How about you? Yeah, I mean, that's the old saying, right? Hard work wins. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard or, or whatever it is. I'm not sure I'm butchering that. But yeah, I mean, I would, I would 100% of the time, if I had to choose between an effort guy with mid-level talent and a super talented guy with mid-level effort, I'm going to take the effort guy uh, all day long because you're never going to win with 50-50 with uh, effort on the football field. I'll tell you that right now. So yeah, so the effort there uh, that Fidari Mathis uh, demonstrates that he's bringing to the Washington Commanders is certainly a, a big part. and It's going to help him continue to get on the field and to do good things for the Washington Commanders. And I think, uh, again, you know, going back to what this team needs, when you when you talk about the struggles in the front seven, especially the front four with, you know, again, Chase Young uh, failing to kind of really make a huge impact before he got injured. Montez Sweat was, you know, a little bit better, but then had his own uh, issues, both injury, and then there were some off-the-field family things that he had to to go deal with that I don't think anybody is going to blame him for. And then Deron Payne has, you know, obviously from, from time to time in his career has had some effort questions and Jonathan Allen really has kind of been the only consistent presence on that defensive line. So you got a lot of first round picks, but you don't have a whole lot of consistent effort, consistent ability being put on demonstration there. So that's what this is about, I think. And, and if you're Deron Payne at a very bare minimum, this is going to put pressure on you. Now, yeah, like, yeah, he's your teammate. Yeah, he's your brother. He's your friend. You know, Fedarian called him big bro and all that. And that's great. But he's also a guy looking to eat your snaps. Like, like make no mistake about it. If Fedarian Mathis has the option between playing on the field or sitting on the bench and watching Deron Payne play on the field, he's going to put himself on the field. Deron Payne can sit on the sideline and, and cheer on little bro. So if you're Deron Payne at a, at a minimum, whether he stays on the team or not moving forward, this has to be a wake up call to a certain extent. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I, I don't know if I would say my criticism of Deron Payne has always been maybe not that he doesn't give effort. It's just, he's not as consistent as you'd like him to be right. as his talent should make him. That being yeah. said, 
I mean, he's a good player. I just don't know if he's like a dominant player that you build your defensive line around. And of course, that wasn't the case here. That wasn't needed here. But I would also say they need him to dig a little bit deeper because, as you mentioned, there are other issues along that defensive line. All right. So just in wrapping up this conversation uh, and this deep dive on Fedarian Mathis, um, when we consider all of the different variables here, where they picked him, who he is, what he could potentially be, need, fit, this, that, and the other thing, what would you grade the pick of Fedarian Mathis as? So again, this is this is not, and I just want to clarify, this is not about Fedarian Mathis himself as a player or as a person. This is about the decision the organization is making. I'm giving this a C plus. I'm not in love with the pick. I don't completely hate the pick either. I know C plus is going to sound really, really low, and people are going to take that as me really disliking the pick. I just, again, I, I do, I agree with you that there was a need in the defensive line. I just feel like the need was different. And, and again, this is me evaluating the Washington commanders, Washington commanders, obviously evaluate that they need a bigger guy to, to help fill that, that void in the defensive line, not a smaller type pass rushing type interior lineman. I just happen to disagree. So that's, and that's really all is based, you know, based on. Um, so for that reason, I'm giving it a C plus because I like the player and I do like what he potentially can do for this team. I just wonder how much burn he's really going to get versus the investment they put into him. All right. I'm going to go a step above just slightly, and I'm going to go a B minus. I'm going to go a B minus on this because I do think it's a bigger need than a lot of people, certainly the fan base, uh, again, that I heard from, uh, you know, who who acted like this is the, you know, the steel curtain. Uh, please, people, stop. Okay. <laughs> It is not. Trust me. Well, like let's let's watch some tape together. It is not. Okay. And just because they were eighth in run defense last year, David, that's because their pass defense was so dreadful. Teams just abuse that number one, and really that's a back seven issue. But it's not just a linebackers issue, as we know. There was all mm-hmm. sorts of problems in the secondary. And oh, by the way, it's a passing league. And oh, by the way, they were going against a bunch of Hall of Fame quarterbacks. To me, again, I don't look at one set of numbers or one year in a vacuum and just say, oh, uh, it's not a need right now, so it must – no, 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 it's a need. Uh, and, and, again, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse here, but because of that and because I think this guy's going to be sneakier, better than people think as a pass rusher and a, as a disruptor on the way to the quarterback, I'm going to go a B-. minus. Yeah, and all that makes sense. All right, speaking of grades, Mel Kuyper Jr. Oh, let me tell you something about this. Todd, 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 Todd. I'm going to give the B, the, the commander. All right, okay, I, I'm done with my impersonation of Mel Kuyper. Speaking of B-minus grades, David, Mel Kuyper Jr. gave the commanders a B-minus overall. Now, before we get into one particular thing that I wanted to ask you about, if he graded the entire draft class a B-minus, mm-hmm. Here's a hypothetical for you. What would the grade have been in your mind from Mel (laughs) if Sam Howell wasn't there in the fifth round and taken in the fifth round? Probably about a C. I think think getting the quarterback there in the fifth round that he has, I know Mel Kuyper had a very high grade on Sam, probably higher than Washington uh, led on that they had. So that fact alone, I think, is going to boost the grade. Yeah, I, I think that's I, – and I, the reason why I ask that is because I absolutely agree, and I, I might even say it might have been lower. It, maybe it was a C mi- – I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of people changed their tune about Washington's overall draft class when they got Sam Howell at right. – the, you know, the first pick of the fifth round, which again is how this thing works. Right. And, and, and all it is, is just perception, not reality. It's perception, but ultimately he gives them a B minus. So here's what I wanted to roll off of you and see what your spin on this one. Mel said, quote, it's clear they preferred meaning the commanders mm-hmm. Jahan Dotson at 16 over Chris Olave, whom the saints took at number 11. And they recoup draft capital to help offset the call. Okay, we we all understand some of the benefits. But when Mel said it's clear that they prefer Jahan Dotson over Chris Olave, does that ring true in your mind or no? No, uh, I think I think what what Washington again, if if their if their eyes were set on wide receiver in the first round, which would make sense. I think you look at the board at eleven. You got 
Chris Olave, you got Jameson Williams, you got Jahan Dotson, and you still have Traylon Burks uh, on all on the board. So you've got four receivers on the board. You're at 11. You trade back to 16. You know what I mean? There, there's a very slim chance that all four of those guys are going to be gone by the time you come back on the clock. So you take a calculated risk. You recoup some mid-round draft capital, and you know that you can work with any of those four guys mm-hmm. uh, as a wide receiver on this team. You rank them. You know, I probably assume they had their rankings as Olave, uh, Williams, you know, depending on the the injury situation, like it could be Dotson Williams in there. Uh, and then and then Burks was probably was obviously outside the mm-hmm. top three or else he would have been the pick. So yeah. I don't I don't think they preferred clearly Jahan Dotson over everybody else. I just think they took a calculated risk knowing they were still going to get a wide receiver they liked, plus getting picks later on in right. a uh a talent rich middle part of the class, which I know one, at least one of our viewers hates when I say that, but yeah. That's and, and that's exactly why I asked that question and what I took umbrage in Mel saying now, listen, Mel can't analyze and scrutinize every little meaning of every little move when you're covering all 32 teams off the heels of the draft. So I understand that. Right. So this isn't so much a criticism of Mel, but this is the reality. Don't set the perception that, Oh, clearly they liked Clearly, they like uh, uh, Jahan Dotson over Chris Olave. Now, I personally don't think there's a huge gap between Olave and Jahan Dotson. I don't mind that Jahan Dotson is who they actually wound up with. But to say that they prefer Dotson over Olave, I don't agree with. Coming up next, we will do a quick review of the undrafted free agents that the Washington Commanders sent. They signed another quarterback. We'll tell you about that, huh? Another arm for camp. How about that? This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Of course, with the ever-increasing number of makes and models, old, new, foreign, domestic, sports cars, cool cars, commuter cars, whatever you want, rockauto.com is your one-stop shop, guys. And you don't even have to stop there. You just have to go there on your web browser, rockauto.com. And you're going to save a lot of money when it, you compare it to the big auto part superstore that might be near your hometown or certainly the factory dealerships who charge you an arm and a leg, not only for parts, but also for labor. That's what's cool about Rock Auto. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and they're going to give you the very, very best prices. It doesn't matter who you are, an expert or not rockauto.com is going to take care of you go there right now rockauto.com see all the parts available for your car truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com wrapped up today's episode of the locked on commanders podcast david harrison and chris russell on twitter at russellmania 621 at d harrison 82 the show at LO Commanders. And Chris, like you mentioned before the break there, uh, some undrafted free agents getting signed by the Washington Commanders. Let's hit some of the the bigger position groups or names to know out of this group that we're going to see here this week uh, at the uh, the first rookie minicamp. Right. So with drafting Sam Howell in the fifth round, a lot of people thought, well, they won't sign a quarterback. And Cole Kelly, quarterback from southeastern Louisiana, six foot seven, David. And check out this, his completion rate. And again, we have to keep everything in context. Seventy three point five five percent. A quick thought. I can't have enough quarterback arms and camp arms. This team has not done a good enough job of keeping enough people and blood pumping through the system over the years at the very important quarterback spot. I have no problem with this. I actually think it's great. No, I don't know. I don't know why anybody would have a problem with adding as many arms you can get in training camp and for rookie camps and and all those things is great. And of course, uh, Chris, you know, I got to turn my eye to in full bias here. I got to turn my eye to the Arizona State kid just because. He is a Sun Devil. Got to represent the alma mater there. Curtis Hodges <laughs> tied in. Look, another athletic guy. But look, he's 6'8", 257 pounds, another converted wide receiver like right. Cole Turner. It's very clear. Washington is looking to get better and more dynamic in the passing game. I think it started with Carson Wentz, the better arm, better ball placement uh, than Taylor Heineke. And then you see the addition of Jahan Dotson. You see the addition of Cole Turner. Now you see the addition of a guy like Curtis Hodges. Don't want to get overhyped here, right? He's out of tall mountain. Logan Thomas is there. Uh, John Bates is still there. Cole Turner is there now. I mean, he's got a, he's got a tall hill to climb to make the roster, but it's very clear the direction Washington is trying to go with their passing game. 
Absolutely. And just wrapping up the class, Armani Rogers from Ohio, Josh Drayden from uh, California, a corner, Devin Taylor, another corner from Bowling Green. Uh, you mentioned Hodges, Kyrick McCowan, a wide receiver from Georgia Tech, Trey Walker, a linebacker from Idaho, a true linebacker, along with Drew Wright, a linebacker from Notre Dame. So that's how they got uh, that position addressed. Farad Gardner from Louisiana, second Louisiana uh, pick. Again, another linebacker. So they went heavy be in the undrafted free agent pool and Tyrese Robinson, an offensive tackle out of Oklahoma. We'll have more on those guys, of course, after rookie minicamp when I have a chance uh, and actually David has a chance uh, as well to go out and view them in person. All right. Thanks again, guys, for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and your first watch of the day. If you're on YouTube, now make your uh, the Locked On NFL podcast, your second listen and watch. The schedule may be dark, but the NFL never stops. And neither does Locked On NFL get insights and opinions from hosts, including Ross Jackson, Chris Carter, and Tony Wiggins, plus Locked On local NFL hosts repping all 32 squads. There's no offseason for real fans, so make sure you're subscribed to Locked On NFL on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. I'll be back with a solo episode, then David will take his turn, and then we'll be back together again before the end of the week. If you want to hop in, 301-615-3577 or washing, uh, Locked On Washington Commanders at Gmail. Dot com. For David Harrison covering the Washington Commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation, I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Medhurst Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. If you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another, and thank you for joining us right here on the Locked On Commanders Podcast.